good afternoon friends um, my name is francis and i'll be speaking on uh, pen testing uh, no sql databases uh, with no sql exploitation framework so about me uh, i'm an independent security researcher a uh, member of open security uh, open security is a uh, is an open organization for uh, security minded people uh, we post tutorials uh, videos etc on uh, research we do so i am currently pursuing my bachelor's degree i have spoken at a couple of conferences uh, and i sleep uh, at morning and research is and calls at night so uh, let's get straight uh, the agenda of the talk uh, is pretty simple we'll be uh, giving more importance uh, to the server client and server management consoles of the uh, nosql databases uh, we'll look at pen testing scenarios uh, uh, we, uh, we will not deal with uh, memory related bugs or issues uh, we'll talk on no, the nosql exploitation framework and we'll have uh, uh, plenty of demos so uh, i think many of our, uh, all of us have heard of the uh, nosql databases so let's le have a look at it uh, uh, the main features of uh, nosql databases are schemaless uh, they they have support they are open source uh, they run pretty well on clusters uh, it's built for the 21st century web um, it does not use a relational model database and it is mainly known for its uh, feature asset which is atomicity consistency isolation and durability okay so uh, what makes it uh, different from sql databases is that it is uh, schemaless uh, data can be inserted into the uh, nosql database without uh, de uh, defining a rigid database so uh, the format of the data being inserted can be changed at any time so this makes it uh, makes nosql databases uh, different from sql databases okay, so uh, how do we categorize them uh, some of the main categories of nosql databases are uh, white columns uh, families hbase and cassandra come under them document store databases uh, mongodb and couchdb come under it uh, key value uh, tuple store databases riak redis are examples of them and we have graph uh, graph databases neo4j dex etc so let's uh, let's analyze the uh, constitution of the nosql security so uh, if you see the screenshot uh, you'll find that uh, we have plenty of uh, the open po open ips available on shodan network so shodan i think many of you are aware is an open uh, platform where you could search for ips uh, running the same port so you'll find that uh, mongo has an uh, a really large amount of ips open available you could connect to them using the mongo client uh, it's uh, you see that for mongo it's 84000 uh, for couch it's uh, 1700 and for redis it's it's uh, crossed over 35000 so now for redis i think the current search results uh, approximate to get about 1 lakh so you could see that uh, the amount of uh, open uh, the ips available are more so uh, let's have a look at uh, some of the uh, issues we could uh, use within the nosql databases so uh, while abusing api calls uh, you don't have any proper validation in the api developers use these to uh, for certain developing certain applications uh, php uh, for these uh, databases is pretty much buggy and uh, it's uh, it's uh, terrible code written so let's have a look at uh, all of these databases individually so mongodb Mongo is written in C++. Uh, main point: it contains uh, friendly properties of SQL databases. Uh, the query language we use is similar. The Mongo uh, the, it uses the custom uh, BSON protocol. Uh, Mongo is the uh, Mongo DB daemon running on port uh, 27017 by default. Uh, it has the web interface on 28017. Uh, Mongo is the client, and Mongo is the server side. Uh, it uses the MongoDB wire protocol uh, that is represented using JSON format. So uh, the Mongo architecture, uh, this is a simple uh, architecture, architecture of the client and server communication. We have the Mongo server and the Mongo clients uh, and different Mongo clients connected to it. So uh, how does the attacker kick in? Uh, attacker has a lot of uh, possibilities over here. You could sniff, enumerate. You could use uh, JavaScript injection attacks and denial of service attacks. 
Okay, so uh, the JavaScript attack surface will be first dealing, uh, looking for the JavaScript attacks possible. So uh, JavaScript attacks uh, mostly used are used against MongoDB. Uh, Mongo uses the JavaScript engine, uh, Google uh, V8 JavaScript engine. Uh, it was for versions greater than 2.4 and above. It was using uh, the SpiderMonkey JavaScript engine for uh, versions less than 2.4. So uh, vulnerabilities in MongoDB has been under the scanner. Uh, uh, example would be the uh, recent command execution vulnerability in the MongoDB, uh, which helps the attacker to gain uh, 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 system access. Uh, Mongo shell functions are purely based on JavaScript. Uh, possible chances are there to override JavaScript functions within the Mongo uh, shell. We have resource exhaustion attacks, and plenty of all the JavaScript function uh, functionalities that we use can be used within the uh, MongoDB. So uh, let's have a basic look at some of the uh, SQL commands uh, which are used in MongoDB. So and mapped in SQL is uh, to double ampersand in JavaScript or to a double pipe and equal to we have double equal to. So we'll get to this uh, when, we, uh, when we show the demo. So saving JavaScript, uh, so uh, why, why uh, saving JavaScript is one of the uh, important functions. So uh, while pen testing, you will uh, you'll have uh, uh, certain uh, situations where you need to uh, repeat the attack. So, uh, so what happens is that you could write certain JavaScript functions uh, where you could use, uh, you could write a custom function and you could call it again and again. So um, the NoSQL exploitation framework has, has also the capability to add functions and you could uh, call them. So uh, Mongo stores its uh, JavaScript functions within the d uh, db.system.js uh, and uh, uh, you could load the custom scripts using the load server scripts command. Okay, so uh, injecting JavaScript. Uh, reference to the database in Mongo. So this is an important key factor. While writing uh, PHP applications for Mongo DB based apps, uh, you'll find that um, this was one of the main injection attacks used. You could use the uh, database object in reference. Uh, so what, I, what do I mean by that? Um, so uh, if, if an attacker has, uh, so if the application is vulnerable, uh, uh, an attacker would pretty much uh, uh, use the database object in reference uh, to, uh, to uh, pretty much access the database. So this was uh, found in versions on, on Mongo of uh, less than 2.0 or less. Mongo matched, patched this for versions above. So, so they thought pretty much JavaScript injection ended here. So, so still, uh, the, even though they blocked the uh, database reference object, uh, still uh, JavaScript functions were available. You could use uh, timing-based attacks uh, to check for uh, atta uh, JavaScript injection possible in the web applications. Uh, Mongo uh, supports, as we told, uh, most of the JavaScript functions. Uh, so a pretty much function return sleep of 500 seconds would uh, render, the, render the application delayed by five seconds. Uh, so uh, this, has been, uh, this module has also been added to the uh, NoSQL framework. Okay, so uh, this point of reference. Okay, so this is also an important factor. After the Mongo had blocked the database object reference, uh, the, this pointer was one of the uh, main used to bypass the uh, bypass uh, the database object. So what happens is uh, this uh, reference. Uh, if you are aware that uh, this uh, pointer uses uh, to return objects within the function, so uh, attacker could use this pointer to return objects and they dump the uh, entire application. So we'll have a, a look at all of these examples that we told.
Okay, so this is a web application written in uh, written for Mongo. So if you so if you search for something, let's say. So it uh, dumps out. This is a simple web application. It simply dumps out dumps out whatever we uh, we give it. It has a backend database that stores the data. So. So you could see that pretty much uh, when we uh, told the application to return this, the application dumped the whole uh, username and passwords of the uh, application we had written. So uh, what uh, what uh, what was used here what, uh, was a function called uh, where, which is used in MongoDB to evaluate JavaScript functions. So uh, what we do uh, did that uh, we gave in a couple of appliant uh, JavaScript injection try and we tried uh, returning it using the this pointer. So, so uh, I like to. Ch uh, so what happens if even this is blocked? So uh, uh, we have the version command by default. Uh, it is bound to all Mo uh, Mongo Java Mongo functions. So if so, even if an uh, admin or the application developer blocks the this pointer, we have the uh, the version command. Since the version command is bound to all the uh, default Mongo uh, functions, so what happens is that. So as soon as the uh, an attacker tries using this, uh, then this operator is blocked. So what you could do is you could use the version command, and it dumps the uh, entire database for you. So this is what this is one some of the JavaScript injection you could used uh, used to uh, uh, bypass applications written in uh, uh, PHP. So a uh, Mongo with PHP, uh, PHP is uh, vulnerable to certain attacks. So, so what we could do is uh, PHP converts the parameters into brackets, uh, uh, the brackets to arrays. So what happens is that even if you specify uh, brackets after the parameter, it gets converted to array. So uh, how is this how is this useful? Is that uh, if an attacker specifies certain uh, queries within the uh, uh, within the uh, Java, uh, within the function, uh, function, what happens is that uh, it, it returns all the, uh, uh, the all the queries that we inquired for. So some of the uh, vectors discussed uh, discussed for uh, Mongo-based PHP applications were dollar and e, and all which uh, which means that not equal to. So this is similar to uh, SQL injection, but it happens here in Mongo. So uh, some of the more uh, attack vectors are like a dollar exist, dollar type, and dollar all. Uh, so dollar exist uh, matches the documents that have the specified field. So if the if uh, if a specified name uh, field uh, named username exists, uh, the application uh, dumps all the uh, all the uh, information related to it. Uh, the dollar type selects documents if a field uh, is of specified type. And for dollar all, it matches arrays that contain all elements specified in the query. Um, resource exhaustion. 
uh, MongoDB on 32 uh, environment is too easy for attacks. Uh, the maximum size limit for uh, the storage capability for Mongo is 2, uh, 2 GB. Uh, the use command within the Mongo shell uh, helps you create arbitrary databases on the fly. So what uh, an attacker could use uh, do is that he could write uh, the, what we told that JavaScript functions uh, to uh, create databases on the fly. So what happens is that he uh, you could create uh, go on creating uh, the databases uh, under uh, the entire disk space uh, uses up. So an MD database takes up to 192 MB. This is uh, one of the key factors for the resource exhaustion attack. So let's have a look at the CouchDB. Uh, the CouchDB architecture is very much simple. It uses the database. You have the JSON and the client layer HTML, which is the Futon interface available. Uh, the backend CouchDB, the Futon interface, which is visible to us, and the uh, administrator. So uh, where does the attacker kick in? Uh, uh, the possible attacks are accesses, CSRF, and sniffing attacks. Uh, so some of the let's have some of the uh, key features of uh, Couch. It is written in Erlang. Uh, CouchDB uh, uses JSON documents uh, object. It is schema free. Uh, it uses the HTTP or REST protocol. Uh, it has the Fusion uh, web interface. Uh, the client uses the REST API to communicate with the backend. So uh, what's the attack surface for the Couch? Uh, so by for Couch by default you have the unmet Marty. Which means that uh, anyone could have access to the uh, to any of the uh, to the whole database. So, uh, well, uh, the short and I told that uh, there was pretty much like a uh, thousand plus results for admin party. You could directly go into the uh, uh, database and change. You could access. You could do store data on it. It, uh, it was more than thousand plus results. So uh, the authentication cookie is sniffable. So if you are within the vicinity, you could sniff for the auth, uh, auth cookies. The credential, uh, credentials are sent over an un unencrypted channel. Uh, Cross-site port attacks are possible uh, in the uh, replication of the Futon interface, uh, which we'll show. Uh, XSS HTML injection uh, is also possible in the Futon interface. Uh, and denial of service attacks are possible. And file enumeration attacks are also possible on Couch. So let's have a look at the vulnerabilities. Uh, access is, uh, is at the token interface. Uh, you have the HTML injection that can be used the attackers to to, uh, to lure the vit, uh, victim to other sites. Uh, the cross-site port attack uh, is uh, is like uh, uh, you have you could uh, it checks for the uh, suppose you have you could uh, the application checks for the uh, URL. So what happens is that. Uh, if uh, suppose consider a backend server where uh, it has, uh, allows only specify IPs, uh, so you could what you could do is that you could specify the local host IP and check for backend open ports. So uh, this these ports you won't get while scanning by using Nmap or something like that. So that's what how the XSP attacks are useful. Uh, the blind file name enumeration uh, is also possible with the replication. So uh, the authentication cookie, uh, the main feature of this is that it expires within 10 minutes. Uh, it's one of the uh, factors that uh, attackers would uh, want uh, to, uh, wouldn't like while uh, uh, using the authentication cookie. So, uh, so the attacker would want to use these 10 minutes fruitfully. So the NoSQL exploitation framework kicks in uh, by automating the session, uh, grabbing and dump, uh, dumping the necessary info. So what happens is that if you put, if you sniff and a uh, cookie comes in, uh, it automatically takes in the cookie and uh, logs into the session and uh, gets dumps the data for you. So uh, PHP uh, on Couchdriver, uh, uh, it uses the curl library to send requests to the API. Uh, unvalidated PHP apps could result in arbitrary uh, P API call execution. So this is only uh, um, uh, this is only one of the PHP drivers uh, I found. There are many other. Uh, most of them use the curl uh, library to send requests. So, so what's the problem with the PHP uh, on curl? So the problem is that you could see that. Uh, it uses the uh, since uh, Couch uses the Rust API, 
uh, you can see that it is directly communicating uh, with HTTP requests. So an unvalidated PHP application uh, could uh, force you to you uh, uh, to val uh, to navigate through other pages or to navigate through other API calls within the database. Uh, here you could see that uh, the function vulnerable is query and test. Uh, the query and uh, test sends uh, get request uh, the, the URL and the document query. Uh, uh, the query and test function, if you uh, check within the source code, you could find that uh, it defaults to the uh, curl query. So. So what happens is that uh, the whatever you uh, given uh, unvalidated calls could result in execution. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so uh, this application searches for any user and fetches if the user is uh, there and if, if it is found, uh, it is uh, it displays along with the username and password. If it is not, it displays the, uh, the uh, error message. So you could see that uh, it just have enabled the error message so that you could see, uh, you could see that uh, it, it is, you're searching for the, uh, it is giving a get request to the database OpenSec for the, you, uh, for any valid user A. So, so there's an uh, API uh, call available in uh, CouchDB, which is known as underscore changes. So uh, underscore changes or underscore all docs, which means all documents. So what happens is that uh, these API calls uh, fetches all the uh, documents that are available. So you could pretty much see that the available uh, documents are uh, this uh, flag is here, user ID two, and you could further uh, the these API calls uh, allows the attacker to get the database information and so on. The same is for this is an application uh, which is uh, same which runs on the same logic. Uh, what happens here is that you as soon as you send uh, and uh, all logs uh, which is an the api call we told it automatically uh, logs in for you so the vulnerable code is that you could see that uh, the uh, the client uh, uses the get doc so what happens is that uh, since the uh, doc evaluated to true that it, it contains some data since it uh, since the all docs command returned something uh, some data in it so uh, they all uh, so the doc command contained data so it returned true so that's why we logged in So let's have a look at Redis. Uh, Redis is no more different. Uh, Redis, uh, let's have a look at the Redis architecture. Uh, the Redis architecture is pretty much simple. You have the API, and you have the Redis database, uh, and you have the clients connected to it. Uh, so some of the key features of uh, Redis databases are, uh, it is a key value storing engine. It, uh, it is dif uh, what we told, uh, uh, it is different from the other Mongo and Couch. It uses the key value pairs. Um, it contains the Redis server and client. It is driven by a configuration file. Uh, the documentation is actually pretty much funny for Redis. If you read the doc uh, Redis documentation, it's uh, you'll have you'll find at least five bucks for sure. Uh, and Redis supports five data types like uh, strings, hashes, uh, list sets, and all of the sets. So uh, some of, some of the attacks possible in the Redis uh, databases are uh, you could brute for uh, Redis passwords, which is possible for you in the Couch and Mongo. Uh, you have denial of service attacks. You have the command killing. Uh, we'll get to it. Uh, we have the config rewrite. 
uh, we have arbitrary file rewrite and we have blind file enumerations which could be useful while uh, penetration testing. So the uh, photo I've kept here is a screenshot I've kept here is uh, some of the, is one of the uh, why I said that Redis documentation actually supports uh, attackers. It is written that uh, since Redis is pretty fast, an outside attacker can try up to 150k passwords per second against a good box. So this is pretty much inspiration for the attacker. So uh, a good written tool could uh, crack a pretty much long uh, password within uh, one hour or something. So uh, Redis version is an important factor while uh, while attacking. So uh, Redis version supports, uh, there is no scripting support for uh, Redis versions less than 2.6. Uh, Redis introduced uh, the Lua scripting, scripting for versions greater than 2.8. So, so uh, the scripting is really an important factor. Uh, the main problem with Redis was that so uh, some of the uh, Redis Lua scripting engine and basics. Uh, Redis uses Lua to manage scripts. Uh, the Lua engine is properly sandboxed and it offers uh, pretty much good security. Uh, the global variables protections is one of the examples why Redis is probably secure. Uh, the scripts are executed using eval uh, in the, within the Redis shell. So uh, these are the uh, limited no uh, number of libraries available uh, within the Redis. Uh, you could use only these. Uh, these are the only uh, libraries Redis offers while scripting. So uh, this, uh, while checking, while going through the uh, libraries, it is pretty much uh, little bit for the attack, but still we have many options. Uh, let's have a look uh, before we get into the attacks. The eval and uh, eval sha are used to evaluate scripts using the uh, Lua interpreter built, uh, built into the Redis. A script kill uh, lists and access of some of the functions, we'll get to it. Uh, uh, so one, some of the, one of the important uh, point uh, in Redis is that while a script is running, no other functions can be accessed or any operations cannot be performed. So this is one of the, uh, one of the big loop, uh, one of the big problem of Redis. So if an attacker runs an uh, uh, a loop, uh, so no, no user could access the database or issue any commands, except for this uh, script kill list access, which could only be uh, given by the administrator. So uh, this is a this is a pretty much one line uh, denial of service. Uh, you tell it to uh, run it uh, while it's an infinite loop. So what happens is that the resources get exhausted and uh, pretty much the uh, Redis server dies. So uh, the uh, rename command API call used. So uh, commands can be disabled by attacker. So what happens here is that uh, if an uh, attacker uh, connects to the uh, server using the client, he could uh, rename commands uh, such as he could rename the con config command uh, to some arbitrary command he wants or he could even permanently disable the command by using the, uh, by simply just uh, uh, renaming to nothing. So the command uh, co becomes uh, completely useless. So arbitrary file rewrite, uh, this is one of the main problems of uh, uh, this Redis database. Uh, config, uh, the config under uh, space get gives the current configuration for Redis, uh, the config space set sets the configuration uh, of the uh, default command. Uh, we'll show we'll have a demo for this. Uh, the file name enumeration, uh, this, uh, this is useful while pen testing. Uh, you have a restricted environment uh, and uh, it's pretty much locked out. Uh, what you could use is you could uh, use the do file, uh, which, is a, uh, which is one of the, uh, one of the uh, Lua script features uh, to open a file. Uh, the file does, although the file doesn't open, uh, it gives the file, uh, gives whether the information that whether the file or directory exists or not. So what happens is that uh, you evaluate the do file or w uh, directory exists but could not open file. So uh, we, we check for WWS, uh, no such directory exists. So what could, uh, an attacker could use to enumerate file types. So let's have a look at the demos.
Oh, okay, this is the uh, the file in a blind file enumeration. So I have connected to my local host. So uh, I run the uh, evaluate uh, the command. What I told the do file to open the file. So uh, since uh, no such file existed, uh, it returns that uh, the uh, no such file existed or directory. So let's try, uh, try a valid file. Okay. So the extra password is a valid file. So uh, uh, what happens is that uh, uh, since it tried to evaluate, uh, it tried opening a file uh, which had uh, illegal characters, it, it resulted in uh, error. But what we could see that in the error message, the there was no such, uh, there was uh, there wasn't the uh, uh, telling that uh, no such file or directory existed. So it pretty much means that the uh, file is available for attacker. Uh, the file rewrite. Uh, so the config uh, space get star lists you the uh, configuration on the Redis box. Uh, so you, if you could see that currently uh, Redis files uh, writes its uh, Redis uh, the database for, to uh, var slash lib slash Redis. So what uh, an attacker could do that he could rewrite the uh, location to Somewhere he could access uh, via some uh, via the IP uh, via the HTTP. So okay, so if you see that Let's write some uh, arbitrary data and do. So uh, now you see that I have in the uh, WR directory a test uh, file. So So let's write some data so that so, so let's have a look at the file we wrote. So you see that uh, the file has been overwritten. Uh, and the uh, you could use uh, you could ar arbitrary overwrite these files. And the denial of service is uh, pretty much simple. So you could see that uh, now Redis hasn't topped the list. So let me. So you see that uh, the Redis server has jumped to eighty-seven point six percentage of the uh, resources used. Now if you try even giving, try get do uh, issuing commands, it won't work since, so you see that uh, the Redis server is busy and you have to kill it using the script. Okay, so now, So for Cassandra, uh, it is written in Java. Uh, some of the main points are uh, it is used to store huge data sets. It uses the SQL3 uh, protocol and Thrift. Uh, SQL3 is very, uh, is very much similar to SQL, uh, but with some limitations. Uh, it runs on port 9160 by default. Uh, some of the sad facts are uh, it, uh, it does not have uh, or union, uh, does not have any sub-requests. Uh, terms must be indexed, 
and the primary key can only be queried for. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, Cassandra model. It has this key, sp key space, uh, the column family and the data. Uh, SQL injections are possible on web apps. Uh, uh, it, since it is very much similar to SQL, uh, the queries are uh, very much uh, similar to it. The shell commands can also be useful for an attacker uh, during uh, privilege escalation. The source command uh, in Cassandra shell leaks the uh, file. It opens the file and leaks the contents for you. It's also possible for file blind file enumeration uh, in the Cassandra shell. Uh, the database enumeration and uh, dumping has been added to the uh, SQL exploitation framework. So uh, we'll have the demo last. Uh, the HBase. Uh, HBase is also written in Java. It has support uh, for billions of rows uh, and columns. It uses the uh, REST protocol. It has a uh, default port of uh, 6379 and 8080, uh, which is the AP, uh, REST API. And HBase gives more emphasis on trusted environment. So some of the security issues of HBase are uh, man the middle attacks. Uh, the REST API is exposed. Uh, again, the uh, the ability to scan and enumeration has been added to the uh, NoSQL exploitation framework. So uh, the NoSQL uh, database research has never ended. Uh, Neo4j, Memcache, uh, Rack are under the scanner. Some of the uh, vulnerabilities applies to these also. Uh, support for these are soon to be added to the framework also. Uh, memory leaks and overflows are on the rise. Uh, an excellent address to the uh, Neo4j security issue is been uh, under the blog. You could visit the blog. There has been uh, it is a, it's a very good uh, address. Uh, they have addressed this uh, security issue for Neo4j. So is automation needed for uh, this? Uh, so do we have a framework? Uh, the NoSQL exploitation framework. Uh, it's a framework of its kind. Uh, it is written in Python. Uh, so I'm not a hardcore coder, so bugs are there. Uh, I've documented the APIs on nosqlproject.com. You could use them if you are contributing to the uh, uh, framework. Uh, it has currently support for uh, Mongo, Couch, uh, Redis, HBase, and Cassandra. Uh, it is support for NoSQL run web applications. Uh, it tests for JavaScript attacks, uh, the MongoDB dollar attacks, uh, Couch DB PHP driver attacks. Uh, it also has a multi threaded mass IP list scanner. You could use uh, uh, the IP list you obtain via Shodan uh, to, uh, to scan for ch and check whether the uh, IP is vulnerable uh, to any of the attacks. The list continues. Uh, you could dump. It has a cloning feature. Dictionary attacks are possible. Uh, it has the show and IP list uh, grabber. Uh, you could sniff uh, for DB credentials and cookies uh, and more payload list. So future updates uh, updated. For I'll be releasing an updated version after this talk soon on Cassandra and HBase attacks, resource exhaustion attacks, and uh, support for IAC, Memcache, and Neo4j. Uh, pen test report generation where it could be used for uh, the uh, pen testers uh, for the uh, generating report and more stable, uh, much more stable release. So uh, the bugs you could contribute to at feedback at nosqlproject.com uh, and you could contribute by pulling it from GitHub. So we'll have the demos. So we'll have a look at one of the features of what I have added, uh, the blind file enumeration. Uh, you could specify the IP, uh, the no, uh, nosql framework.py. Uh, the file check uh, is specifically for Redis and the file uh, file list, payload list you have. So, so you could see that uh, now uh, it, it automatically goes on and checks and you have only the web.config file. You could specify the directory within the payload list. So this is one of the features of the uh, framework. Mm. So this is also an uh, enumeration module for couch. It goes on uh, to get the uh, couch version. Uh, dumps or it automatically dumps the hashes for you password hashes even for this is this is done also on mongo 
uh, for couch I have currently uh, released an update version where you could specify uh, it's a post of exploitation like a face where you could specify the database you want to extract specific to okay, so uh, it, it goes on and enumerates the database keys OpenSec uh, so you have the uh, uh, contents of the database OpenSec uh, this is similar for, uh, you could enumerate Redis, Redis I think you have, okay so the features remain same, uh, you could access the list of features on the side, I think this. So this uh, okay. So one minute, I didn't show the demo for the source. Okay, so this is the uh, source command I told for Cassandra. Uh, so as soon as you hit source for etc. password, since uh, it was used to. Uh, source was uh, used to get the source code uh, based on the SQL query, but since here uh, it w this wasn't the SQL query, you get the entire uh, etc. password files for you. So this is some of the references I took. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so any, I think the, if you have any questions. Okay, thank you.